Hello friends, welcome to another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Pilot. Today I am bringing you a very ecstatic topic known as COVID-19 and Favipiravir. It is also known as Evigen and it is also known as Avifavir. For the starters, I would like to tell you that the SARS-CoV-2 induced COVID-19 disease has been already declared as a global pandemic by World Health Organization. More than 7 million people have been affected by it. More than 4 lakh people have already lost their lives. So scientists throughout this globe have been trying really meticulously in order to come up with various vaccine regimens and various drugs in order to curb and curtail this specific pandemic. In my previous videos, I have already talked to you about the virology, pathophysiology, the drugs being used like remdesivir, tocilizumab, salilumab, chloroquine plus azithromycin and why men are more vulnerable to the SARS-CoV-2 infection, what is the role of AS2 and why is it known as the primary receptor what is the role of CD147 and why is it known as the secondary receptor? And how, how does interleukin 6 pan out? How does cytokine storm or cytokine release syndrome occur? And how does ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, occur in specifically critically ill SARS CoV 2 patients and leading to their demise? In today's topic, we will be focusing on a very specific anti flu drug known as Fapipiravir. It's also known by the name Evigan in Japan. And in Russia, it is also known, as, also known by the name Avifavir, where it has demonstrated an extremely promising study. And why are the promising study promising results? What has happened is the Russian government has declared it to be used, has allowed its usage in general public. So it has become the second drug to be officially allowed to be used in general public, specifically against COVID-19. To combat COVID-19 after remdesivir, which has already which has already got the emergency authorization approval by the Food and Drug Administration USA. Now, Fapipiravir can be taken orally against remdesivir, which can be taken only by the intravenous route. Now, Fapipiravir is a pyrazine carboxamide derivative. It's known by the name by its chemical name 6-fluoro-3-hydroxy-2-pyrazine carboxamide. Now, Fapipiravir was generally used against the virus known as influenza virus, influenza A, B, C viruses. What it does is, it's an inhibitor of viral RDRP, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Now we know that the viral RDRP of influenza virus and SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2 is quite identical. Therefore, what happens is when we take, when the dose of apipiravir is administered in the human body, it is converted. It's a prodrug. Mainly, it's a guanine nucleotide prodrug. Just like remdesivir is, a, is an adenosine nucleotide prodrug. Now, what happens is this undergoes ribosylation and phosphorylation in the liver via the purine salvage pathway. Now, what happens is guanine is a purine nucleotide. So, it's a purine nucleotide or nucleoside analog. So, it has, what happens is there is an enzyme known as HGPRT, hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. This specific enzyme, what it does is, it's, it, it ribosylates and phosphorylates the fapipiravir. Thereby converting fapipiravir into fapipiravir ribofuranosyl 5' triphosphate. In our body, it can also be converted into fapipiravir ribofuranosyl 5' monophosphate or fapipiravir ribofuranose. So in these studies, in the research papers, what has been published, it has been observed that the fapipiravir RTP, ribofuranosyl 5' triphosphate is the only form which can inhibit the RDRP, the RNA dependent RNA polymerase in case of influenza virus also and in case of SARS-CoV-1 and also SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now how does it all pan out? It's still a mechanism which has to be elucidated completely but what has been found in research via experiments is that this specific RTP, fabipiravir RTP form, when it is administered, it can mimic guanosine triphosphate, GTP. And wherever G has to be added, the RDRP gets confused and adds this fabipiravir 5' RTP. And after one fabipiravir 5' RTP into the growing nascent RNA strand, the RNA polymerase or RNA dependent RNA polymerase finds it difficult to attach the next one. And after two molecules of apipiravir 5' RTP has already been attached to the nascent RNA strand, 
why are the RNA dependent RNA polymerase? Then what happens is this eventually leads on to the termination of the nascent RNA chain, which was then catalyzed by the viral RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Now, in case of influenza, there has been various mutations which lead to the overcoming of this, and it has to be elucidated in case of SARS-CoV-2 also because the NSP12 is the RDRP and NSP14 is the viral exonuclease which has got the 3 to 5 prime exonuclease activity. So whether this can mutate, the NSP14 can mutate and recognize this guanine nucleotide as well as remdesivir which is the adenine nucleotide analog and overcome this and can cause resistance, it can become resistant to this papipiravir or not, this is a thing to be seen. Pharmacologically what happens is, if you look at the pharmacodynamics of abipiravir, it reaches the peak plasma concentration after 2 hours of administration and it has a 54% of protein binding, generally binds to albumin and alpha 1 acid glycoprotein. Pharmacokinetically if you see it has got a non-linear pharmacokinetic profiling and mainly in the liver it gets processed, it gets metabolized for excretion by aldehyde oxidase and to an extent by xanthine oxidase, but mainly by the aldehyde oxidase enzymes. These enzymes are present in the cytoplasm or cytosol or the cytosol of the liver. So it is not really metabolized by the microsomal which are derived from ER P450 enzymes which are used in the phase 1 biotransformation of xenobiotic compounds. So and one more thing is IC50. Now, inhibitory concentration, maximal half-life of maximal inhibitory concentration 50, IC50 of abipiravir has been found for RDRP to be 0.022 microgram per ml, but it can inhibit our DNA polymerase of eukaryotes alpha, beta, gamma, but at a very high IC50 of 100 microgram per, per ml. So that is not seen, 0.22 microgram per ml versus 100 microgram per ml, it's quite a huge difference. So, the administration of abipiravir would not lead to the DNA dependent DNA polymerase inhibition. It would only lead to the RNA dependent RNA polymerase, polymerase inhibition as the IC50 is too low to be hindering the DNA dependent DNA polymerase activity via this drug abipiravir. One more thing to be noticed here is that drug interactions. Now, it has been found that it interacts with various drugs but the studies are not so you can say extensive. Only it has been found that there are specific S2 receptor antagonists like cimetidine. There are also studies found where amyloidine which is a calcium channel blocker. It can interact with these drugs. Why? Because the cimetidine and amylodipine and some tricyclic antidepressants, they are the inhibitors of aldehyde oxidase AO enzyme which is the most used enzyme for the metabolism of abipiravir in the liver. But various clinical trials has shown that abipiravir is really a quite promising drug. I won't say it's a real, you can say benchmark drug or it's a real boon for SARS-CoV-2 or to encounter SARS-CoV-2 and for the COV-19 patients, but it's really a promising drug, not so depressing and not so frail. So it's a drug which can lead to betterment and which can reduce the recovery time and enhance the betterment of or recovery of people who are suffering from COVID-19. In one of the studies, it was compared with lopinavir and ritonavir, ritonivir control group. And what was done was this fapipiravir was administered along with a interferon alpha. So what happened was it reduced IL-6, it reduced IL-1 and it to an extent it helped or it assisted the COV-19 patients to recover and the sample size was of 80 patients. In another of the clinical trials where the sample size was 120 patients, random, randomized clinical trial, what was done was this fabipiravir was compared with arbidol and again what happened was the severity of fever was less when favipiravir was administered. The recovery time after a week was lesser in case of, in case of favipiravir. 
So these are some promising results and the Russian government in Russia has done a lot of clinical trials and all of them have come successful. They have come out with flying colors with regards to Papipiravir. So one can speculate, mind you, one can speculate that Papipiravir could be a promising drug. But again it has to be tested worldwide and it has to also get regulation and approval from the Food and Drug Administration USA. You need larger trials, larger phase 3 trials in order to really be conclusively able to state that Habipiravir could be a drug of choice for the patients who are suffering from COVID-19 as has been proved with Remdesivir right? as it has got the EUA and Tocilizumab is also doing well because I have explained to you the pharmacodynamics and the biological DMARD how does IL-6 receptor antagonist Tocilizumab works. So in one of the studies in recent times, few days ago, it has shown that tocilizumab has been able to aid 45% of the patients and has been able to reduce the recovery time in 45% of the patients and they were all, eventually they all became fine. They all were able to recover from COVID-19 who had the cytokine storm or cytokine release syndrome. So, Fepipiravir could be a promising drug but one has to wait. It has got the Russian approval, that's all fine. but one has to wait before starting to administer papipiravir and the dosage and the pharmacodynamics must also be taken care of and mind you the drug interactions has not been decided. The drug interaction studies DDI drug drug interactions had not been extensive. So you need to have extensive drug interaction studies in order to know where if papipiravir could cause damage if some people with hypertension or diabetes or any other comorbidity and also suffering from COVID-19 are being prescribed Fepipiravir and are being administered this drug Fepipiravir. So that's all the conceptual progress that you need to have in order to be able to comprehend and decipher this lecture. If you like this video, then kindly hit the like button and I have put the link of various research papers which has the clinical trials and which has the mechanism of action of Abipiravir in the description box below. I have also put all the links of my previous videos related to COVID-19 in the description box and I have also put the link of my Facebook page in the description box below so that you can directly contact me via messenger and get my prompt reply. If you have any doubts regarding this lecture or regarding anything regarding SARS-CoV-2 or any biological topic, you can always without hesitation post your queries and doubts in the comment section below. I will be trying to reply as soon as possible. If you have liked the video again, then kindly hit the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever my next video comes online. Thanks a lot. See you soon.